He's up one game. He is starting to the bottom right of Entune Belly in the red color. Our Protoss player for the MVP team. He is MVP genius. One game away from advancing into the next round of Code S. His opponent with a very, very um, economy oriented opening on the last map, trapped into a corner with his uh, units, lost his advantage, and then later on the game, the Terran player for OGS to the top left. OGS Supernova. OGS Supernova. Yep, Supernova getting all of the advantages early on with his build, showing a great build, and Genius looked so behind but forced the game his way. We'll see what Supernova does again. Taking a gas on this map. Looks like he has something very specific planned. This is his map choice. Not a map that Genius would probably expect him to pick either. We've seen an amazing game on Daybreak and we expect certainly another awesome game on Entombed Valley as well. And guys, if you want to just uh, watch awesome GSL games in the future, then you definitely should check out the, well, the ticket system of uh, the GOM TV page, gomtv.net slash tickets. There are a couple of special offers available for you now. And if you know people who don't have a GSL pass just yet, if you know some friends who uh, did not follow the GSL in the past, and definitely make sure to point the specials out to them because right now a GSL tickets are as cheap as they were never before. Absolutely, man. Very true. $10 off. Uh, GSTL tickets, or 10% off uh, GSTL yearly passes, and plus the $5 uh, voucher as well. There's something I wanted to mention, you know, I, I talked a lot about how this is kind of a weird map choice for Supernova, as in Terran versus Protoss, the win rate on this map is about 42%, 41.9% for Terrans, with about 31 games played in Korea, so it's a really Protoss favored matchup on this map, and even more so than it is against Zerg, you know, as I was saying earlier. So he really is confident with his strategy. It looks like he's going to two racks, which is not something that you see often in Korea. It's a very foreigner style strategy, very old school strategy. You just don't see this very often. Oh, no. The question is, I don't think he saw. Did he see in the main base uh, what's going on? I don't think Genius was able to no see the second barracks. So now if he sees the bunker, he's going to think, oh, he's teching to Banshees or tanks or something because he only has this many Marines and... If I'm not mistaken, Genius actually saw the reactor. That's the one thing that he really spotted, but he did not know about the second barracks and uh, we have now Stim being upgraded. But you are right mentioning that this is a strategy that we usually... Uh, we don't even see it in a, a Hornet PVT anymore. It was really popular for quite a while. But I remember that Paul used this strategy on assembly a few times because he didn't, uh, when he was already sure that he advanced to the next round because he didn't really want to spoil his tactics. And it did not really work out that well. And everybody at this point was just baffled because everybody thought, why is he going for this 2x opening? It's not that strong anymore. So why exactly is he trying to do this? And uh, he explained later on that he didn't want to show his PVT tactics because he wanted to save them up for the next day. So as you already mentioned, it's a strategy that is not that common anymore. Oh man, Genius is so in the dark right now. Supernova doing a great job with the fake out yeah, here. Yeah, that's the problem. He he even pulled some Marines to do some pressure. So Genius is probably like, what? Like, why would he do this? In any case, if he's taking the Banshees, losing these Marines would really dampen his ability to push or, or taking the siege tanks either way or both. Moving these Marines out is kind of risky. If he loses those Marines, he loses a lot of power with this push. Genius is probably freaking out a little bit right now. And I believe what we're going to see with that factory is, is he actually, yeah, he's making a tech lab there. He's probably just going to push with some siege tanks. I expected uh, him to go for a medevax though and do like a two racks of medevax pressure, but I guess he's just going to stick with tanks and marines and marauders. In fact, not even making marauders, just using the tech lab for stem. And he's going for siege tank timing while well, we have the observer now out on the map. So with the observer, he will be able to spot what's happening. He needs to make sure that the observer is not sniped though. If the observer crosses the middle of the map and Supernova pays attention to the minimap, scans and takes down the Observer, this would be so bad for Genius. Yeah. I mean, if he has no idea what's coming, he will not defend it. Here comes the Observer now, and he may just snipe it. This is so important. He sees it coming. He wants to hide his green numbers this time. Interestingly enough, probably didn't have a scan or he would have killed it. Combat Shield's now on the way. This is such a unique timing attack. It's something that is 
just not hardly ever seeing. He's actually making a starport back at home, by the way. And this is not a strategy that you would expect on a Tomb Valley. No, it's not. So strange by Supernova. No Siege Mode either. He's actually making a Medivac now. He can use a Medivac to micro his Siege Tanks, which even in Tank Mode will do a lot of damage. Oh, wow. He forces nice. the Observer back. That is so huge. It He's will eventually get in, but... Oh... Maybe not. There it is. Is he able to... No, he's not. He's not able to get it. And here comes the Observer into the main base. Now he knows what's up. A second Observer is on its way. The tanks have been spotted. The Medivac as well. And now Genius knows what's cooking. He's immediately starting his uh, first Immortal. He's warping additional stock as he's preparing for Robotics Bay. He needs a Robotics Bay with this many Marines, with Stim and Combat Shields. With even some Medivac support, it's going to be so difficult. He's not moving out right away. He wants to wait until he can have Combat Shields as he's pushing because he doesn't want to get caught with his Marines in the middle of the map. SCB is coming here as well. He's going to be using them for bunkers primarily, but also to tank a little bit of hits. Genius doesn't want to be caught with his pants down. He just wants to delay this push a little bit, but it's going to be so hard it's to fend this off. Almost impossible. He needs to force one or two siege ups before the base is reached. That's what he needs to use. That's because if he doesn't do that, he won't be able to use his sentries at all. If he can't use his sentries, that's a huge investment he's already made. He needs to buy time for Colossi. He absolutely needs Colossi. He's trying to force a siege up here, but Supernova's not taking the bait. He's actually just continuing to push forward. There's a siege up. Dude, that just buys a few seconds. Might be all that he needs here, he but will this be is able to, be so difficult. He will be able to force field one time here, but just one time. With the medevac granting vision off the high ground, that's all he'll be able to do. Oh, he needs oh, to get gonna... those immortals into position. Yeah. Now he's forcing a stim here and using the force fields in order to go back. But the immortals are in position to take down the siege tank. Are they able to get it? Yes, they are. Yeah, he gets the siege tanks, but his zealots are melting so quickly. Calder, I think he's still going to lose this fight. Uh, the sentries the moved too close. He lost the immortals and the sentries. And with medevacs out, with this many marines with combat shields, this game is not going to last much longer, I don't think. Does he have a Colossus in production, though? That is the question. He needs one. His Stalkers are trapped. Wow, and now he's losing so much. He's going to lose the Nexus as well. The Siege Tank is in position. The entire army of Genius is going to the right side of the map. He just wants to wait for his next unit for the Colossus. He has the control. The Colossus is going to hit very soon. He but, doesn't have range, uh, and he has control of the ramp with his Siege Tank, so the Colossus can't even really come down. The probes are coming off the line. He needs to actually deal with this Colossus. Beautiful split is able to take down a lot of these stalkers, but what about the Colossus? The Colossus yeah, he's is actually not surviving. Oh, the bunker Whoa. finishes, and the bunker finishing is really going to turn the tide here. He does target down one siege tank. He's going to go for the second one. Green's targeting down the stalkers, but he will not save the other siege tank. And to be perfectly honest, I think he's actually going to win this game now if he can get another Colossus out, if he's patient. He still has a ton of resources banked up from having that next, so even though he's up to five gates here, six gates even, he has so many extra resources from that Nexus. And the work account would be really interesting at this point, as we had Supernova pulling a lot of his SCVs, but here oh. comes the... Oh, he needs to be careful, he is not allowed I like to lose it. this. I like it, he's going for the bunker now, he's committing now, he's not wasting oh. any time, I love this by GS, he loses the Colossus, but he cleans up the siege tank. This has to be it. Oh man, 24 workers to 19. And Supernova in a tough position because his opponent now has a stronger army than him and better tech. Wow, this is going to be really brutal, but the Colossus, it died a ton of damage done though. I cannot believe that he holds this. I cannot believe Amazing it. Amazing play by him. I am actually in shock right now a little bit. I was really worried, especially when he killed the first siege tank. He was not able to save his two immortals. He did not really pay attention to them. And then suddenly the marines from the low ground were able to take both of them down. So if he would have saved the immortals for a little bit longer, it would have been much easier. But as it was, he had to wait for this Colossus. He had actually to he had to sack his expansion. He had to re he realized I can't defend this until my Colossus is out. I have to wait. So he pulled everything to the right side of the map, waited, even let the bunker finish because he knew I have to wait for the Colossus without the Colossus. I don't stand a yeah. chance. Now, normally in this situation, when you uh, you get ahead like this, you just kill your opponent because you know you kill a siege tank, so you have a better composition than him. But in this case, because medivacs are out, he can't do that. He knows that there are medivacs out with marines in them. He'll just get dropped and killed uh, in his main base if he tries to do a big push. So he actually has to expand and play a longer game. But if he does that, he should be just fine. He's not making a nexus though. He, he 
may have been thinking, well, he saw my pro, maybe he'll be misled to think that I'm getting an X. Look at his resources bank up, though. This is kind of weird. 70 to 70 supply in total now. And, well, Supernova, he is preparing. He's going for the Viking count. Oh, he wants to kill this drop so bad. He's actually pulling yeah. the Stalkers back to fake. Now, now he's going to go for it. Ah, not quite able to take it down. He spotted it early with one, of, with one of his observers, and he has the second force for Supernova. Both of them on one base right now. Yeah, I don't like GS's decision to attack here. In most cases, you can win, and he still will probably win, but if he just makes a Nexus, he's so ahead, and he can afford to do that. He this is, is just like really two committed. fighters in a ring waiting for the next punch to happen. Both of them yeah. preparing for the next attack, and it's going to be a big one. It is going to be a big one. We're going to see him try to circumvent... Uh, Nice drop here, gonna catch a Zealot. Which the Zealot's purpose was to look for this drop, so it looks like mission accomplished. This is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be so close. At this point, I don't think that he, did he start with the range upgrade? I believe he has the uh, range upgrade. He should. And, oh my god, this is going to be the so close. The Zealots are at the back, close. he needs to set up his engagement so much better than this if he's gonna really commit to this right now. There are three Vikings out. And the tanks do a lot of damage to Colossae. There are even some Dark Stalkers in the mix. I don't know what's up with those. I but don't think he... Oh, and he's going for it. Here comes the Guardian Shield. He's moving in. He doesn't have uh, any range upgrades. Trying to take the force of his opponent down the siege check. Getting obliterated here. He just has here. too much. And he will end it. But it was a risky move wow. by Genius. But Genius seems to really understand how to attack. And, well, actually, he's pushed back here. But I, I think... I, it's hard to say, Keller, now because... The, the worker count still remains dead even, and here's something to note, man. There are medevacs out, so the better army uh, mobility goes to Supernova, and he also has this thing, uh, this ability on his command center called Lift, that he can actually use to move his command center to the natural, where he already has a fairly heavily fortified position set up now. This is crazy, Wolf. Supernova is actually probably going to win this game now, because even though Gius' attack looked really strong, it just wasn't quite enough. And I just said, I really did not like him attacking into those siege tanks. He could have just waited. Well, the problem is if he waits longer, then he has to retreat because he can't fight the Vikings of his opponent. He needs to get a better force. So at this point, uh, Supernova definitely in a very good position. He was able to hold this. And Genius once again taking a risk. We saw him do this on the first map as well. He could have played a lot more safe. Thankfully, but he just tried to end the game right away. It worked out in his favor. He played very, very well. Chose his attack timing perfectly. This time, Supernova just holds, and now it's tipping into his favor. Yeah, it's way this in his favor now. Could be the tipping point here. Yeah, it, I noticed his opponent is killing all the rocks, so you can make sure there's no hidden bases up there. Um, you know, this game actually reminds me... And there it is. Yeah, there's the lift I was talking about earlier. This game reminds me of what it used to be like when I played PVT on Close Positions Metalopolis. But we're on Cross Positions in Tomb Valley. He could have just <laughs> made a Nexus and sat home and defended. You know what I mean? Like, Close Positions Metalopolis with PVT, yeah. you just have to keep fighting. You can't expand. Neither player can really safely expand because the attack uh, distance is so short. Yeah, and you always have to... Uh, you kind of have to uh, expand towards your opponent. There's not a lot of choice for you, so yeah. you play on one base for quite a while. But in this particular scenario, we have both of them with the option of going for an expansion, or at least Genius had the option to oh, expand absolutely. after should his have done base it. died. He should have done it. His Colossus count was so high. He also had production stuff. He didn't have to power up like his opponent will if he had taken a second base. And he's just long distance minded because he just has to. A little harassment here. He's actually going to drop into the main. And that's not Genius is out of position. There's nothing to defend against this wolf. He can't warp in too many units right now. He only has one set at the low ground. He's losing way too many probes here. His lifeline is being completely cut off. And he's forced to attack. He's forced to all in here. And he does. He attacks, but the Siege tanks three in total. They do so much damage. The force fields are these, but is he able to take this? Only 23 supply left for Genius, and he dies to Supernova. Wow. A throwaway game there by Genius. Could have sat back and defended. Wanted to end the game earlier, and Supernova holds. So we will have our exciting third match coming up very soon. I did not expect that choice from Genius because like I said, before the match even started, all he has to do is play safe one more win, and he's in the round of 16. He decided to go for the attack. I don't like it. He did such a great job when he defended against the early attack of Supernova. He defended so well, was patient enough to not overcommit, and in the end, he could have played a little bit more safe, but it was a clutch decision. It was so close. Supernova was inches from losing this game, 
when the Genius suddenly attacked, but in the end he had enough units to throw the MVP player back, and now the score is tight, and we have a deciding game. We have the next map coming up. Ladies and gentlemen, it is going to be Antigua Shipyard. Now, normally, in this case, when you've held off your opponent's Marine tank push with Colossi, you go for a counterattack and win, but that's normal with Banshees, because then he spent so much resources on Banshees, which all die. He has no real power to defend anymore, but he still had tanks this time. And there was a medevac. Now that one medevac full of marines is the reason why he can't attack immediately, because if Genius just attacked immediately and there was no medevac, he wins the game. But instead he had to keep trying to find the medevac. A lot of time was bought by Supernova there. Then he missed his timing window to attack, so when he went for the attack, it didn't work. So he missed that timing window just because of that one medevac. And if Genius had only made a Nexus, he would have been fine. I can't stress enough that how normally this would have been the right choice, but the medevac just delayed him too much. If he goes without dealing with the medevac, he loses all his probes and potentially loses the game anyway. This is just such an amazing game. Two great players facing each other here, Genius and Supernova. And it's so hard to judge these situations when you're actually sitting in the booth and playing. There's a lot of pressure on your shoulders and of course also. But we can judge it with the Observer perspective for uh, Supernova and Genius. It's a little bit of a different story here. Absolutely, man. He doesn't know if there's another Command Center on the main or not. It's hard to tell. Exactly. It's very, very hard to tell. And therefore, we have a third game, which I am pretty happy about, Wolf. Me we too, man. Once again, Genius against Supernova this time on Antigua Shipyard. One win away from both of these players advancing to the round of 16. Who will it be? Will it be Genius or will it be Supernova? We're going to find out here at our game three of our winners match of GSL Code S Group B with Caldor and Wolf.